up? How are you? Great. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. I have a thousand questions for you guys. So yeah. Blind Channel was formed in 2013. You guys play heavy rock music. Um, and yeah, you guys never stopped working since uh, 2013. And then you were nominated for the IMA Awards in the category Rock Album of the Year 2019. Yeah. And not to mention your electrifying um, energy for your performance of Dark Side at Eurovision 2021. <laughs> yeah. So how do you feel about that? Well, like Eurovision, like we're not we we've never we were never Eurovision fans, so we didn't really know what to expect. But yeah. then, like, then we, when we got there. It was just amazing, an amazing experience. And probably the biggest thing that has happened to us like during our career, like I just heard that right now we have like 3 million monthly listeners at Spotify. And then our followers skyrocketed. Like we had hundreds of thousands of new followers and stuff like that. It's been going, going crazy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was, it was super cool. And now the work is just beginning like eurovision's over and now we're gonna be able to stand on our own feet and like after dark side like most of the europe and people around the world start to know like okay there is a band called blind shell and now we gotta show them once again what we're all about so we're really busy working right now but yeah it's been cool you know what i'm going to read some comments that i found is about your music video cutting out Oh my um, God, an old one. Yeah, yeah, the, the old one. So that's why I'm stunned by how many years you guys have been making such awesome tracks. Okay. My last few years, I've been starting to listen to a band of your quality. Thank goodness for your appearance at Eurovision. Well, <laughs> that's <laughs> nice. Yeah. And that yeah, really nice. Yeah, we've been together for a long time. Like, we've been together like for eight years in the end of this summer. So yeah, it's been a long time. And I'm glad someone still likes calling out. Like, it's a really very old song, and we were still practicing how to write songs at the time. But I'm glad people like it. Since the Eurovision final, I cannot stop listening to Blind Channel. I may have found a new favorite band. Greeting from Germany, where the beer is cheaper than water. <laughs> this one was cool <laughs> yeah i think we said in some interview that like we've been touring in germany quite many times many times we've been to germany and we just we just love it so yeah, yeah can't wait to go back you were at Wacken. um yeah Wacken was our first show at south finland and it's funny because yeah. it, it's back in open air it's the it's the biggest metal festival in the world and we won this band competition in Finland and the prize was to play at Wacken. The only problem was that we didn't know how to get there from Finland. We were like some, like we were 20 years old, a little yeah. less. Like some of us had driver's license, some of us didn't. So we drove to Wacken all the way from Finland, like first up and then through Sweden, then through Denmark and then to Germany. <laughs> and it was like a three days drive. And and our first show, like it, it was just an amazing experience. And we, I think we played for 20 minutes. It was yeah. 20 minutes showing back and, but it's unforgettable. And we have been together for like less than a year at the time. So we really grew, grew closer as a band during that trip. That's super cool to hear. Um, I want to know a little more, of course, about you. So um, how did you met, first met at school or? Well, like we were in the same music high school in Northern uh -huh. Finland in this city, in a city called Oulu. And then like, but we didn't really hang out because the guys were rockers and I was a rapper. Like, don't let the hair fool you. I'm still a rapper. And then <laughs> okay. I, was hang I was hanging with my rapper guys and we were just eyeball like mad dogging each other. Like, fuck those rockers out there. And the rockers were mad dogging at us. Like, like, yeah, fucking rappers. And then we didn't really hang out. But then we were at this house party and somebody like pulled a Linkin Park on the on the stereos and mm -hmm. then 
the rappers went wild and then the rockers went wild. And then the guys came to me and said that, hey, we're putting out this new band. You should come and to hang out and let's play something. And I was like, count me in, let's do this. And then next day I went to the rehearsal place and that's how Blind Channel started. That's super cool. Can you believe that Linkin Park influenced a lot of, lot of bands since uh, 2000? Yeah, Linkin Park was definitely the biggest influence for us. Like we wouldn't be here without Linkin Park. But I think it's important to mention that we never wanted to be like a second Linkin Park or a poor version of Linkin oh. Park. We just love what they did. Like they were definitely a rock slash metal band at the time, but they were brave enough to like listen to mainstream music and they took all the like amazing things from the mainstream pop music scene, like the scratches and then yeah. the hip hop scene and then the electronic samples and they like mixed it with their own rock sound and created something completely new. And that's what we're doing. Like we love the fact that they were truly pioneers and that's what we're trying to be like in 2021. Like mm -hmm. when you hear Post Malone or Weekend or Billie Eilish on the radio, we yeah. want to be able to go there. Guys, we should do something like this. And then we can just do it. We add our own rock touch to it and then we can do pretty much do anything we want. You definitely did, really. It's really crazy. I also read that you have been inspired by uh, Anter Shikari, 30 Seconds to Mars. And 30 Seconds to Mars was also one of our favorites, like, because they did things like massively. They were a huge show band. They weren't just playing on stage and staying still. They had huge shows and th they were also like thinking big. And that's what we loved about them. And so I think we kind of adapted that from 30 Seconds to Mars. Like, not, don't just play live, like do a show, entertain people, surprise the audience. That was the idea. And then Enter Shikari was our favorite when we started and because their live shows were so energetic, like how they, they did the shows with audience. They had chore choreographies for the audience, not mm -hmm. only for themselves. And then the whole crowd was, whole audience was dancing and it was just mind blowing. We actually played a show with them first in Helsinki Okay. And then in the SIGA festival in Hungary. So we, we played and we met the guys that were super amazing. So yeah, big influences those two as well. So today, can we say that Blind Shannon had the perfect lineup with all of you guys? Yeah, Blind Shannon has the perfect lineup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so like that's, I think. Like many people have been asking me, like, what's the secret of like Finnish bands and young, young bands and artists? They ask, like, what's your secret? And I don't really think we have a secret, only the fact that we're working really hard all the time. And yeah. the fact that we, the six of us, got to the same band, like our, the chemistry between us. We're like brothers, we're like family. Like, I love those guys. I've been hanging out with them every day for almost eight years. And not a day has passed that I don't call them or stuff like that. So the chemistry is really important. We can feel that, that you guys are like brothers, you know, friends, close, cool, close cool friends. So that's uh, yeah. obvious. Yeah, we can really feel it. So that's super cool. Let's talk now a little about your music. Um, so as I said earlier, you guys never stopped working since 2013. And... Uh, you released your first single in 2013, right? Save Me. And then yeah. uh, for Shadow, After That Revolution, Blood Brothers, Violence Pop. That's super crazy. Yeah. And I just wanted to know a little more about this collaboration with uh, Jonas Orson. Yeah, like Jonas is one of the best, like, pop, best music producers in Finland. And... Yeah, yeah, we did three albums with him. He's an amazing person to work with and he's so talented. So yeah, it was just nice. And the fact that he had like, he had history with Finnish rock bands with like Amorphis. He mm -hmm. had produced Amorphis, but at the time, like we got together, he was doing this like Finnish pop artists. He was in the pop music game. And then that, that was like so fresh, like guy who knows about rock music, but also about pop music. So he was, at the time, he was really the right producer for us. And it was really nice working for him, working with him. And okay. yeah, we really love the albums. So what kind of artists you guys are? Like uh, you need to compose and to work in a quiet place or 
no like when we start making music there's no quiet like anywhere like <laughs> <laughs> it's loud and it's hectic and like everybody has a lot of ideas like we have like all the guys are making demos and stuff like that then we have our phones and somebody's playing something like listen i made this and then we're just listening and then okay. everybody starts screaming like this is cool and this is cool this is bad this sucks this is awesome and then we're just running around the room and everybody's just throwing ideas <laughs> okay. like sometimes there have been visitors in our studio and they just they leave after 10 minutes because they get anxious because it's so like adhd like energetic energetic mm -hmm. but i love it like that's just our way of doing it like we turn into this we're already like we're all all of us are 20 something but when we hit the studio we turn into this 10 year old boys and we're just running around and screaming <laughs> but that's, that's that's the awesome part we're working with blind channel oh that's good to hear really dark side this song yeah oh my god uh this song uh drives you to the sixth place at the eurovision it's it's amazing what is um the the message behind well I, dark side was written in the beginning of 2020 wow. we had just released our third album we have big things coming and then everything was canceled, like the pandemic hit the world, everything was canceled in front of our eyes. It felt like our dreams were taken away from us. And then we were sitting at our rehearsal place, we were super pissed off, frustrated. We wanted to throw middle fingers up in the air and scream. And then we figured that a lot of people all around the world must be feeling exactly the same way. And yeah. we wanted to write an anthem for all those people. Like when, when life turns to shit, you don't want to hear songs about love and hope and happiness and all that. You need a song where you can throw your middle fingers up in the air to and scream. And we needed a song like Dark Side. So that's why we wrote it. And we felt like other people might like the song too. And I know the song is pretty dark and pretty heavy, but there's actually this pretty uplifting and uniting message behind it. Like the dark side is some, it's a place where most of us, I think all people experience dark side in their lives. Like, something is pushing you down you feel like shit you feel like an outsider you feel like a freak whatever and what we're saying is that that's perfectly normal and that's okay you're in the dark side it's pretty fun here we're here we're here too drink some blind channel throw your middle fingers up and let's have a party like that's what we wanted to say to all people who feel anxious or bad about themselves we were trying to say that it's perfectly normal it's okay let's have fun how, how was really lockdown for you you were separated or no we were together like the, we cool. had a couple of lockdowns here in Finland like during the first lockdown we wrote, we made a cover of Anastasia's Left Outside Alone <laughs> that, yeah that happened during the first lockdown lockdown and then we had a couple of quarantines because of the Eurovision yeah. we have to stay in a lockdown for two weeks before we left to Rotterdam so we were together of course yeah. and just having fun and making music but how do you feel about concerts and live music? So how much do you miss live music? Well, you can describe how much we miss <laughs> live music. Like the best part about Eurovision wasn't the placement or the experience. Those were amazing as well. But the best part was that there were like three and a half thousand people in the audience that were singing our song. Like that was cool. And yeah, that was the best part about Eurovision. And the fact that it seems that in Finland this summer we get to play some festivals. So we finally oh. get to unite with all the fans and all the listeners. Like that's the best part, like mm -hmm. in doing music and performing live to do it to an actual audience. And you get to enjoy that moment together. So I think we are having our first show in a month and fingers crossed that they don't cancel it. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll look forward to it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, can I ask you, uh, what was your favorite song of the Eurovision 2021 and why? Well, Maneskin song, of course. <laughs> of course, we loved it. It was a rock song. It was a super catchy rock song. So, yeah, that's that what we've been vibing. But there were, there were like so many like super awesome songs. Like, we... I think right now we love all of them because now they're just nostalgic to us, you know, because yeah. they take us back to Eurovision. Those super good songs. But yeah, Maneskin was our favorite band from the start. Like, guys, kill it. We love them. So are you going to uh, keep contact with uh, those uh, artists that you saw at Eurovision? 
hopefully that would be super fun we haven't talked about any of that yet except mm -hmm. and we like it would be so awesome to do shows with man skin mm -hmm. but we didn't actually i think the only thing we talked about is that if they ever come to finland drinks on us if we ever go to italy drinks on them so yep. we're <laughs> yeah yeah we only talked about drinking our bad probably but anyway so it would be so amazing to do like collaborations like in music or in live shows or whatever with those but let's see what happens yeah why not what is the story behind the red middle finger at the year <laughs> the red middle finger is yeah like well the middle finger is our big important part of the song dark side dark side yeah. we're basically singing about showing your middle fingers up put your middle fingers up and then we kind of saw it coming that ebu told us that we can't show middle fingers on stage we can't do that because that it's a family show mm -hmm. but i always have an ace up in my sleeve you know yeah. uh, <laughs> so i was prepared for that and then i said to the guys that don't worry about it i got something and then we just painted them red and that was even more funny because like mm -hmm. i think that was even even better than just showing your middle finger because that's something like the best thing is that like little kids in schools in finland they have this assignment that where they have to like <laughs> all the middle fingers red teachers did it like grandmas did it everybody did it even there are statues in finland and the statues somebody painted their middle fingers red it became this national phenomenon in finland and even outside finland so it was even better so thanks ebu for telling us what not to do. and the idea was just that if we can show our middle fingers we can at least make sure that no one can see them uh, yeah or find no. another way. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Always about uh, revision. Have you uh, been, I don't know, in a funny or horrible situation and you want to talk about? <laughs> Let me think. I can't, like, I heard that Joel had some accident, like, just before the finale, that he went to the toilet and there was a clean, someone cleaning the toilet and the floor was very slippery oh. so he fell and almost hit his head like oh. that could have been a really bad thing he could have cancelled the whole final i remember just remember him coming out of the toilet like i almost died and i was like what's <laughs> up man <laughs> like we gotta hit the stage in 20 minutes like what happened i heard something like that um the music video dark side uh is on the way to reach the four million view on youtube how do you yeah. feel about that it feels amazing like those numbers are so big that i can't just quite comprehend them like i suck with numbers anyway so <laughs> i just know it's a lot of people but what i'm really looking forward to is meeting also all those people like thank you for everyone like who's been watching our videos or listening to our music i can't wait to meet all of those and i know the guys feel the same way like yeah. we just want to get to the stages and interact with those people and enjoy mm -hmm. the moment together like Mm. That's a lot of people, a lot of people I haven't yet met and it pisses me off. So I want to, I want to go there and thank everybody. Would you like guys, I don't know, to, to come and play at Help Us Festival? Do you know this festival in France or not? I've heard of it. Yeah. A couple of times. You should like, come. Never, you should come. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we should definitely come. You should, you should tell it, your promoter, like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we are going to harass him. Because <laughs> we've like we've we've done a couple tours in Europe, but we've never been to France, so we really, yeah, we've never been to France, so we're really looking forward to it. We don't know yeah. what to expect, so we're hoping that France will like surprise us positively, and I'm sure of that. So it's just a matter of time, I guess. Uh, this one, what is your dream collaboration? Dream collaboration. I think it would be Mike, Shon Sh Mike Shinoda from Linkin Park. That would be cool. Okay. Yeah. Or then Celine Dion. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah. Uh, okay. What next uh, for Blind Channel now? Well, the follow-up single to Dark Side, the next single that's coming, just okay. came back from mastering today, actually. I just listened to it. Sounds awesome. So we're shooting a music video pretty soon. And then we're just looking for a release day. Hopefully it might be end of the summer or sometime next fall, hopefully pretty soon. So new music coming, 
we're super busy. Tomorrow we're gonna hit the studio to record a new album that's coming sometime next year. And then of course we're waiting the live shows. First we're gonna tour here in Finland and then hopefully first in Europe and then around the world. That's super cool. We cannot wait really for this. Anyway, what is on your playlist? Right now I'm listening to Post Malone. Post Malone is, is the best. The weekend, I've been listening to a lot of them. Then Architects, Architects is awesome. Bring Me the Horizon, I've been listening to a lot of them. Billie Eilish's new single, that, that was cool. Mm. A lot of music. The, your guilty pleasure song? It gotta be like, well, I already mentioned like Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On. Okay. I think that's the best one ever. And then uh, Nathasa Bakingfield's Pocket Full of Sunshine. I don't know if you've heard of it. No. Yeah, you should check it out. Okay, I will, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and for you, the best love song of all the time. Best love song of all the time? Yeah, yeah. Well, there is only one, one right answer, and I've said it already twice. You should say it. What is it? Celine Dion. My... Every night in my dreams, I see you, I feel you. I love it. You just made it. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah. And, uh, the best metal song or rock song of all the time. Oh my God, yeah. this is a hard one. You should ask the guys. They're the true metal heads. And whatever I'm going to say, they're going to be pissed off about it. But <laughs> I think, like, I've never listened to a metal song as many times as I listened to Parasite Eve by Bring Me the Horizon. Like, that uh, song blew my mind. I've been, like, I listen to it twice a day still. Uh, I love the song. Okay. That's super cool. And maybe a last word for the French audience? To all the French fans... Thank you for your support. We wouldn't be here without you. And to all who haven't heard of us, you're gonna hear from us, you want it or not. So maybe you should just check us out. Blind Channel, join the violent pop revolution. Let's have fun. Thank you. Merci. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much.